Hey guys, Zach Mars here, and this is my review of Troll Hunters Tales of Arcadia. Okay, so this episode, Waka Chaka, is, uh, well, this episode introduces us to the goblins, and also, uh, finally, I can talk about this now, but, uh, this episode introduces us to the concept of changelings, which, uh, are the, which are, what, which are, are revealed to actually be a major threat to the troll hunters in this episode, and are revealed to be living in Arcadia, and, uh, we do find, and we do find out about that a little bit more, but, uh, and also, I should mention this at the, right at the start, but, uh, the episode Waka Chaka is a the, the the episode Waka Chaka is named after the thing that goblins shout when one of their own is killed. Um, and the, and and since I want to start with this, there is a book called called the Recapitalization of Troll Lore, Volume Forty Eight, which uh is a real book made in uni made, that is real that is, in lore wise is made it was made in universe in collaboration with Jim. Um, as the first human troll hunter since, uh, you know, obviously a, a human troll hunter hasn't existed yet, so the entire thing, so the entire concept of the, of the book is that it's been updated to account for the possibility of another human troll hunter somewhere down the line. So, it is essentially just designed to, it is essentially just designed to help a future, a future human troll hunter should one ever come up. But uh, the reason I bring this up specifically is because that, that book ha actually has, it actually reveals that, uh, that the, that the phrase Waka Chaka is, and I should mention this, goblins have their own language, but uh, Waka Chaka is pretty much the only phrase we know that the goblins are, that we know what a goblin is saying. And essentially the thing that goblins shout whenever they say the word, say Waka Chaka is, he shall be avenged. Which, you know, makes perfect sense, considering it's the thing they shout when a, when a goblin, when another of their kind dies. But uh, in any case, this episode uh, proceeds to open up with a Delivery driver just not doing his job very well. I will openly admit that. Just uh, this guy is this guy is driving it. Isn't he? Is barely paying attention to the road. He's listening to heavy metal music in his headphones, not really paying attention to what to his surroundings or what he's doing. And uh, he's just kind of and he's just kind of driving around, driving around all crazy like. And uh, he eventually parks in front of a house that we eventually find out is uh, well we'll find well we'll find out this later. But he parks in front of a house to deliver a package and. Uh, you know, and of course he's trying to, and of course he's dropping the package several times, which, you know, you shouldn't do. You should never drop a package. I will openly, I will admit that as someone who works in a distribution center, I will, I will openly say you should not drop a package, especially if it's, if it has fragile contents in it. Just be, it, it should just be careful with any sort of package if, in any line of work for that. But, uh, in any case, while he's busy delivering the packages, at this point where we meet the goblins, and the goblins are a race of creature, or a race of creatures. They are just a race of, they're just a race of creatures that, uh, as we find out, are a little bit different, are a little bit different than trolls. But uh, the, the just a, just a tad bit. First and foremost, as I already established, they have their own spoken language, which uh, which is is different from English or any of the other human languages. They just have their own spoken language and only speak that language exclusively. But uh, in case we also meet their lead, we also meet their leader Fragwa, who is leading the group. And uh, I should mention, Fragwa is not really a real character. Um, Fragwa is just the name given to whoever the current leader of the goblins is. He uh, and they, and they usually signify this by a mag by using a magic marker that the original Fragwa finds. He finds a magic marker while they're raiding the truck, and he winds up drawing a and he winds up drawing a mustache on his face with with a, with a marker. And that winds up being the call sign that, hey, I'm the leader now, pay attention to me. But, uh, in case, but in case, the, uh, but in case as they're, dig they're digging through trying to find, trying to find something, and they do eventually find the package that they're looking for, but, uh, right at that moment, the truck driver comes back, and, uh, and they manage to get the package out of the truck without anybody, no without, uh, the driver noticing, which, of course, isn't, is, is, not, is easier done than said, is, is, is done because, uh, as I should point out, the truck driver isn't really paying attention. He doesn't really, he does not really going to notice that a package is missing. Let's be perfectly honest. He's not doing his job very well, but, uh, he do, and also because he's not really paying attention, he fails to notice that he actually closes one of the goblins inside the back of the truck. And, uh, as he's driving off, the goblin, the goblin manages to get the, to get the back of the truck open and climbs out, but then proceeds to get run over. And, and specifically, it's Fragwa, I should mention. And this is why I said he's not really a real character. He's just the name of whatever goblin's in charge. But, uh, 
In any case, Frogwon gets proceeds to get run over and drops it and drops his marker and goes squish, I should mention. Goblins aren't aren't still aren't made of stone like a traditional like a troll would be. They're 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 they are they are they are made of goo and they go squish when you run them when you run them over and or they get hit or pretty much anything else. Um they're very they're a lot more fragile, but, but to make up for that they have they have larger numbers. But uh in case, but in any case when they when they see when the other goblins see that they see that their brethren has been run over by the truck, um and, and it proceeds to drive off. Um, the, the new leader of the goblins, once again, takes up the marker and, and declares itself the new Frogwa, and then, and then, and then proclaims, proceeds to exclaim Waka Chaka, and they proceed to, and they proceed to get ready to take their revengeance out on the truck, uh, and, and the, specifically the truck, and the truck driver who was driving it. But, uh, in any case, this episode, but in any case, it then proceeds to go on to continue onward with the, with the episode where, uh, Jim is currently in the process of training himself. And uh, and this is where the main, and this is where they're actually learning the one of the rules about to uh, always be afraid about the first specifically the first rule of always be afraid where uh, he's where where they're always where of course Jim is learning that they, why they why they have to specifically be afraid because fear keeps you alert and heightens your sentence and then arrogance gets you killed and case in point and case in point as Jim Jim is training he's ex when he's when he's scared he's expertly dodging everything. He's he's dodging all of the he's dodging all of the traps and all the other things that are in the hero's forge, and he's doing pretty pretty well of it, well at it. And uh, and he does point out that and he does point out that uh, he does th that he that he does think that this is probably the one rule that he's actually excelling at. But uh, but but uh, Blinky tells him that he needs to excel at all three if he's going to be a decent troll hunter and if the trolls are going to accept him. And that's uh, he needs to trust his instincts. And sure enough, as he, as as Blinky is saying that, another another turret thing comes up and Jim throws his sword at it, which uh, the, the, the which which it sinks the blade right into the into the poor robot's head. But uh, but of course, and of course, Blinky points out that as long as he you know does that. That he that he has no that he has no doubt that he'll become the a great troll hunter and uh, and of course as we as as Jim is actually training Toby is revealed to be quote unquote training as well um as we find out um Toby has what he what he calls a tubby tracker on his wrist which is essentially just a Fitbit but uh, he's using it to train he's using it as a training as a training excuse because as we find out when Toby as we find out with the tubby tracker when Toby completes certain objectives on his phone and go and burns enough cal cal he earns merch essentially that's that's what the, that's what the toby checker does you put it on your wrist it tracks all your activity that you do and as long as you keep doing activity you will earn new cool stuff which you know is pretty fun and he does take a moment to show it off to arg who doesn't fully understand what's going on and and uh he does go on to explain, and he does go on to explain that uh, he's using the tubby tracker to get fit, pointing out that when Jim gets fit, he's also working out as well because uh, he doesn't want he doesn't he wants to lose a few pounds so he's not as big. And when Org takes offense to that and is confused as to what's wrong with being big, um, Toby explains that there's nothing wrong with being big, but he points out that uh, if he's going to that he's, if he's going to be helpful to Jim as a sidekick, he needs to slim down and become a little bit more nimble. Which you know is a good point. It's very much a good point. But uh, not that he needs it because, and we'll get to that eventually. Because how, because how he actually winds up becoming a helpful sidekick is hilarious. And there's an entire episode dedicated to it. And I will explain that when we get to it. But uh, in case, but in case, um, as but in case, as Jim is as Jim is training, um, draw and draw winds up walking in. Um, and 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 uh, it kind of makes a snide remark to Jim about how uh. He's actually about how uh, about how he thinks it's think it's cute that it's training, which uh, of course upsets J upsets Jim. But but um, but Blinky tells him to pay to pay Droll no mind and points out that his time that the time will come for him to fight and that uh, and that he will actually make and that he will when he when he takes down Droll and actually wins the fight the rematch against him they will make that that Jim will very much make history. Um, and sure enough, as Blinky says that, um, they then the, it then cuts to them to the to uh, Jim's class at a museum. Um, they've got, they've, Strickler has taken them to, on a field trip to the, to the, to the Arcadia Oaks, Arcadia Oaks Museum, um, or Arcadia Bay, but, Arcadia, he takes them to the Arcadia Bay Museum, and, uh, and, uh, no, I think it was right, for Arcadia Oaks, but, uh, in any case, he takes them to the, to the Arcadia Museum, and, uh, and he enter, and he, and, and, of course, we meet the curator, Miss Nomura, who, uh, is the, who actually owns the museum, and is current, and is, uh, and is revealed to be a friend, to be a friend of, of Strickler's, but, uh, she, but she, but she proceeds to tell them that, uh, that's, and this is, and this is very ironic, given where the series goes after this, 
But uh, she she proclaims that it's not all about magic, about magic, wizards, and swords, and a whole bunch of other things. But that, but and points out that real history is a lot more fascinating, and that she's hoping that the kids will be willing to learn about it. Which uh, you know, is funny and is is very funny and ironic, considering you know the series is a magical fantasy series and also a sci-fi series as well. So uh, you know. This is so you know that's it's a tad I it's there it's very funny because obviously Nomura is claiming that there is no magic whatsoever, but in actuality the entire thing the entire premise is that there is magical creatures living amongst humans, which is and uh and also wizards and also knights and all the things that we'll see later. But uh you know and also funnier considering you know we'll see we'll see in, in a couple in soon. But uh but of course Strickler then proceeds to tell Miss Nomura that uh. That's it, that they actually have limited time, and that's, uh, that they don't have time for a guided tour. So, uh, for the time being, he, he points out that, uh, that it would probably be better if the kids just, you know, explore the museum on their own at their own pace. And, uh, Nomura says that's fine, and all the kids immediately rush in and are probably happy, very happy, happy and eager to do that, and immediately rush out to watch all the various exhibits. Um, and of course, what we find out is that, uh, is that, uh, as the, as the, um, tr as, uh, as everybody is just kind of walking around, um, Sobe, Sobe and, uh, Sobe and, uh, Cle and, uh, fr and, and Jim are trying to, try, are kind of just talking, uh, mostly, and, uh, so Toby specifically is talking, talking about his, his tubby tracker, and about all the cool merch he can earn from it, and, uh, he points out that he's, that he's a few steps away from earning, from earning, uh, from earning other things, and, uh, he's earn, he's earn, and he's about to earn a water bottle, as we find out, but, uh, but of course Jim is only half paying attention, and is, and is current, kindly staring googly-eyed at Claire, and uh, and of course, and of course, Toby eventually picks up on that, and uh, and he does, and he does realize that Jim is very much is is very much just kind of you know smitten with Claire and is trying to figure out a way to talk to her again. And uh, sure enough, we find out that this is that that's easier said than done because uh, as we find out, Toby Steve is currently trying to flirt it up with Claire and failing miserably. But uh, essentially, what happens is Steve is very much brags about uh, very much points out very much points out that she hoped that she's very he's very. Uh, Disappointed that he's, that he's just sorry that she, that she got caught up in the little scuffle with between her and J between him and Jim the other day, and uh, points out that's uh, that it's not that, that that he's hoping that he's hoping it doesn't feel like an, any uh, less of, that he's not going to be just doesn't hopes she doesn't think of any less of him because of it. But uh, but of course she points she doesn't she really kind of just really reveals that she actually has no interest in Steve like at all. Um, she points out she just kind of responds apology accepted. You were a jerk. So she kind of understands that Steve is not a very likable person and has very little interest in him. But uh, so uh, Jim kind of has nothing to worry about with Steve as far as romantic rivals are concerned. But uh, Jim doesn't know that. So so of course when he realizes that that Steve is uh, that's and of course Steve very much teases Jim, teases Jim over this by making a very big play about how he and Jesus Claire are going to be smooching up a storm very soon. Um, which is a kind of a, which, uh, you know, is a whole Romeo and Ju which he, he does refer to it as, as kissing him, his Julia goodbye, but, uh, of course, but if we're the later in the episode, but, uh, of course, Steve, but of course, J Toby tells, tells Jim not to pay him, not to pay him any mind, but, and not to let Steve get to him, pointing out that, you know, Claire's smart, she'll eventually realize that, that Steve's a jerk and not really want to work, want to be with him, and, uh, and of course, He's right. In, in the in a matter, of, he doesn't know that Claire doesn't that Claire doesn't uh, like Steve romantically. But uh, he's right, and uh, uh, Jim doesn't know that either. So uh, he responds that uh, that that yeah, he he knows that Steve is a jerk. But also he points out that uh, Claire probably thinks that he's a jerk because he because he's been skipping play rehearsals. And if, well, for good reason, of course, he's trying to become the troll hunter and and is having a little bit of a difficulty managing his day to day life. As well as his duties as the troll hunter, and uh, and and, uh, and of course the, the shim, uh, and of course uh, Stobie points out that uh, he's that that he just needs to that if he's going that if he wants to become closer to Claire that now this is the perfect opportunity to do so, and proceeds to tell him that uh, that all he really need that all he really needs is to walk over there and talk to her, and then proceeds to leave much to Jim, much to Jim's chagrin, and then proceeds to walk over to to Steve. And proceeds to distract him, and this is yet another example of them getting something past the radar that is not intended for kids. But, but uh, they then proceeds to tell to tell to tell um Steve to go check out the Neanderthal exhibit because the 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 uh, the, the cave women are topless. Which uh, of course, but of course, Steve immediately jumps at the opportunity for that, you know, because he's a hormonally crazed teenage boy. 
But uh, of course, but of course, this this open this leaves Jim with an opening to go over and talk to Claire, and uh, and of course he does proceed to go and actually talk to Claire about uh, about uh, how uh, but, but, and and uh, he immediately strikes it up with her about uh, about noticing all the various costumes and all the other things that are just strewn around the uh, that are just strewn around the museum and all the display places. And uh, he does point out that he, that he wishes they had these for the play. And uh, of course, just, and of course, Claire agrees, pointing, joking that uh, if she that with the, that with her school budget, she may very well have to do, have to do the play in her bathrobe. Which uh, Jim points out that if anybody could pull it off, it's her. And pointing out that she was kind of born for it. And uh, and of course, Jim. And of course, J and of course, Claire kind of points points out that she that he should really talk to her parents about that. Pointing out that. Uh, for a very obvious re that for obvious reasons, her parents don't really particularly care about the play. I like it all, um, but uh, mainly because of, because it sometimes causes her grades to slip. But uh, you know, her but you know she does love the play, and and of course she isn't gonna give it up. But uh, you know, where 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 they where it does become a little bit ridiculous. And uh, my parents were somewhat like this. They're not as much anymore, but they were somewhat like this. But because they were very much like you need to do good in school. And to be fair, we did do good in school. So so, you know, it, it worked, but uh, they were very much like if you get if you draw, it's just like it was, they, they were a little bit they were a little bit more flexible. I don't I don't hate my parents for it. It, it, it did help me help me become a better become better at school, and I do appreciate that. But uh, you know, essentially, they didn't like it if I brought anything less than a B, and I and I will blame it that it's not really a it's not really a it's it's fine. I don't like it's fine. I know I know I'm smart. I can I can do well in school. It's not a big it's not a big deal, but uh. You know, Claire's parents are significantly worse than that. Anything less than an A is uh, is a sign that they need to start cutting things out of her life. Which, uh, you know, is is not is which you know isn't the worst thing in the world. You know, wanting your kid to do well in school, you know, that's not that that's not a bad thing. You expect good things from your kid, and, and if you and you know your kid can do those those things and aren't and a slacker underachievers, that's fine. But uh, you know, is expecting your kid to bring home an A every single time. That's the kind of thing that puts pressure on a kid. Uh, like, obviously, Claire's smart; she can do that. But you know, she points. She obviously points that out. If her if her grades slip, if she if she if God forbid she brings home one B, she has her parents insist that she has to quit the play, which you know she isn't particularly happy about. But uh, Jim points out that's uh, that's fine, and that's uh, and that, that that's that's fine. That's uh, and that she shouldn't give it up because she's very because she's very good at it. Um, but. Uh, of course, as of course, Toby admiring his handiwork about helping Jim and Claire get closer. Um, then over here's a conversation between Eli and some other kids, and uh, Eli, it's revealed, um, was the person that was supposed to be, get the delivery at a, at his house, but since he wasn't home, the driver just left a note and left, like you know, like like drivers do. But uh, in the process, um, Eli now has photographic evidence that 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 that, that, that supernatural creatures exist because because the because the goblin. Because the the original Frogwa got splatted in front of his house, and he just kind of took a picture of that and is showing it to, and showing it to other kids, and uh, and of course Jim, and of course Toby immediately, immediately that immediately causes Toby's ear to perk up, and he immediately walks over walks over to Eli and and asks him a bit more about it and asks to see his phone, and sure enough, when he gets a closer a closer look at it, he discovers that that's actually that Eli actually does have photographic evidence and becomes concerned that somebody else knows about troll troll lore and other things. So uh, he immediately so he immediately deletes it on the phone and plays it plays it off as having butterfingers. Um, so it's just to make sure that Eli doesn't have any sort of evidence that trolls that trolls goblins or anything else exist. So. Uh, at which point, at which point, uh, he, at which point, he immediately, uh, he immediately leaves. While Eli is visibly disappointed about the fact that uh, they've stolen, that, that he no longer has his one piece of evidence. But uh, of course, he proceeds. To, but of course, Jim, Jim, and Claire continue to talk, and uh, and Jim points out that, and, and Claire points out that uh, if Jim, that Jim, that Jim doesn't want, that isn't showing up to rehearsals all that seriously, then she wonders then why he even signed up in the first place. Um, and, we're, and of course, Jim at this point proceeds to point out that uh, he kind of signed up up by accident he didn't really mean to sign up like at all and obviously he was put on pressure by Strickler who immediately told him you know you should you, you should go sign up for the play if you're going to use a costume for the tryouts and it's obviously as an excuse to cover for his troll hunter activities which uh of course doesn't work because we know Strickler is in fact a uh 
I mean, no Strickler is in fact a bad guy, but uh, he, but, but of course, and of course, G, but of course, Jim wind up, wind up revealing that uh, he doesn't mind really having signed up for the play by accident, pointing out that uh, he admires the company. And when Claire takes the compliment, he then proceeds to joke that he was talking about Eli, which of course causes her, causes her to come upset with him, but uh, in a playful kind of way. But uh, and of course, and of course, but and of course, it's at this point where she proceeds to point out that uh, it does that she that she's glad about that, pointing out that the, that the. Uh, that the, that the play kind of calls to her, and then proceeds to ask Jim what it, what exactly is calling him these days, and uh, he proceeds to cough and give a vague answer because obviously he's the troll hunter. He doesn't want people to know that. But uh, in any case, at this point where Toby then proceeds to walk up to uh, and proceeds to walk up to um to to uh, to, to Jim and tells him that they've got a situation, and uh, of course Jim doesn't initially want to hear it, pointing out that they're in, that he's that he's that it has to be an emergency for him to hear about it, and. Uh, and of course, just Toby then declares that it is in fact an emergency. And uh, and and then later that night after school, they then proceed to go in front of Eli's house. And sure enough, and of sure enough, as, as they get as they get closer, um, with with Blinky and Argento, as you mentioned, but Blinky and, but Blinky is able to positively identify the remains in front of in front of a uh, in front of Eli's house as a as goblin. He he identifies it as a goblin, which uh. Which of course, which of course, Jim points out that it seems like that it seems like it should be it should be fine. The goblin got squished. Good, good on them. They're, they don't have to worry about it anymore. But uh, unfortunately, but unfortunately, it's at this point where uh, Blinky reveals that actually it's not that simple. He points out that uh, that's where there's one. That if it's one, it's twelve. And the and the problem is that and the problem is that goblins when they when one of their own gets killed, they they take their vengeance out on whoever did it tenfold. Which, uh, of course, which of course, which of course means that the truck driver is in terrible danger when and if he comes back. Um, so, uh, of course, so of course, Jim, so of course, is this point where, uh, where Jim realizing realizing that a ver that an innocent man might very well be killed on his watch declares that he's not going to let that, that he's not going to uh, let that, that he's not going to let this ha this happen. And, uh, and of course, they do find they do find out that it is in fact a truck that it is in fact a truck driver who was delivering something because Toby finds the. Uh, Finds that finds the notice on the, on Eli's door and shows it to the rest of the group, and uh, reveals that and revealing that he'll be back at eight to do, to redeliver the package. Since you know Eli wasn't home the first time, he'll probably be home the second time. Look at, to get this package, and uh, and of course they, and of course they realize that uh, and of course they don't know it's Eli's house, but uh, they do at the same time they also kind of suspect it's Eli's house, but. Uh, they do declare that, uh, they, but of course, Jim declares that they're not going to let an innocent, tr innocent delivery driver get wrecked on his watch, and they decide to actually stake out the house, um, pointing out that, uh, well, that the truck driver sh will be back at eight, so they'll just wait and wait it out until then, until the truck driver comes back, and uh, they can are able to determine where the when the goblins will strike. And sure enough, they then proceed to sit there, but uh, for a while, but uh, then they find out that the truck driver is actually an hour late, and he hasn't delivered the package yet. So. Uh, and of course, and of course, is at this point where uh, where Blinky does expresses frustration with the guy with the fact that the guy who's supposed to you know deliver packages for a living isn't punctual. And uh, of course, he's an hour late. But uh, which you know, truck drivers they're never on time. Sometimes they're early, sometimes they're a little bit late. But usually, they try to get the, get it to your doorstep as fast as possible. That's their whole business. But uh, of course. But of course, but of course, they, they they do have a call do do have a series of call signs with a with, which which again which again Toby calls himself Warhammer, which are to to kind of communicate between Blink, between Blinky and Jim while uh, he and Arg are sitting are sitting in a different bush and are currently working and and Toby is currently working out pointing out that he's still trying to learn cal learn lower his body weight to just kind of protect himself to just kind of make himself slimmer, but. Uh, and of course, and of course, it's at this point where they realize that the goblins may not come back, and that uh, the truck driver may not return. But uh, then Toby sees the truck driver return and immediately call and immediately calls Jim over walkie-talkie to let him know that the truck driver's coming. And, uh, and of course, the truck driver then proceeds to immediately park in front of Eli's house. And, uh, and and once again, he drops the package several times and eventually returns to the to brings it to Eli, which. Uh, but of course, which of course, Eli is excited, but uh, also thinks that it came to his doorstep unassembled, unaware that the truck that the truck driver dropped it several times. He doesn't know that. But uh, and of course, and of course, they point out that uh, it seems that the truck driver is safe. That the truck driver is probably safe. But uh, but then Blinky points up to the so the streetlights where where the goblins are slowly shutting down the streetlights to kind of 
prepare an ambush on the on the truck driver and uh prepare and realizing that the fate has already been sealed and uh and of course when when the truck driver goes inside eli's house to drop off the package he also goes inside eli's house to hit to it go to the bathroom because he hadn't done that yet and uh and he immediately just helps himself to eli's bathroom um, but without without Eli even giving any sort of ver ver verbal confirmation that he should that he's allowed to do that, but uh, of course, but of course, and of course, Jim becomes increasingly distressed, pointing out that it's that that is Eli and that he's a that he's somebody in his class and that he has to do something. But uh, of course, what we could, and of course, Jim do, and of course, Blinky is initially initially does want Jim to to jump in and help, but uh, then he realizes that there are far too many goblins for them to handle at once. And concludes that uh, they should probably that they should probably just you know lay lay low and just let the let nature take its course as it were. Um and uh, of course the goblins then immediately begin to swarm. But uh, what we find out and this is a, and this is kind of a thing is that uh, goblins are revealed to not actually be particularly smart and have no real grasp on co on cause and effect. Case in point, instead of going taking out their vengeance on the truck driver for running over one of their kin, they then take their vengeance out on the truck itself for being the thing that actually did the squishing. So, uh, they immediately, so they immediately swarm the truck and immediately start tearing it apart with their teeth and, and eat the entire thing. Um, and of course, Jim, and of course, Jim uh, points out that, uh, and of course, Jim point, and of course, it's at this point where, uh, where Jim points out that they need to, that, that, uh, they need to calm their breaths, um, and, uh, when, and, and pointing out that, uh, that, that they need to be care careful and not be afraid, and, uh, when Jim shows confusion, pointing out that, uh, they, so that, that's literally the first rule of troll hunting, um, it's at this point where Blinky reveals that, uh, actually, goblins can smell fear. They were specifically the pheromones that are caused from fear, so, uh, of course, so which of course will, will alert them to the senses, and uh, he exclaims that whatever they do, they should not feel afraid. Uh, but uh, then he realizes that he said it too loud, and the goblins then turn their attention to t attention to them, and they immediately realize that they need to flee. Um, and uh, and of course, and of course, they they do attempt to flee. But uh, Jim proceeds to fall behind because right at that exact moment, his armor summons itself because it's reacting to his emotional state and is trying to defend him. Um, but uh, which, which of course winds up being a problem because, as Blinky points out, the armor is going to just slow him down and make him too slow to actually move. So uh, for that reason, for that, and eventually, Ark has to scoop up scoop up Jim while he's in his armor, fighting off goblins, and they immediately start running. But uh, then, they, then they run, but then they realize that they need to figure figure out a way to actually. Uh, you know, get to the, get to the, you find a safe haven, and, uh, of course, and of course, Toby points out that his house is nearby, and since, you know, Troll Market is way too far away for them to go to, so, uh, they, they decide to go to, to, to go to Toby's house and decide to take a couple of shortcuts, and also, meanwhile, the truck driver comes out after, the, after they all leave, and he realizes his truck has been completely totaled and is curious as to what happened to it, but because he has no, the poor sap has no idea what happened, but, uh, but of course they immediately run into Toby's house. They immediately run to Toby's house and uh and Blinky and of course they they do they do jump the fence with Ark's help. But uh Blinky Arg but Blink but of course Blinky, Jim, and Toby fit inside the house no problem. Well uh Arg being a little bit bigger has a little bit difficult a little bit of difficulty fitting through the door. But uh fortunate and, and uh, also in the process, so and, and Toby winds up losing his fitness tracker to 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 Fragwa and uh he winds up and he winds up lo losing it. But uh you know, because the goblins do attack him at one point, but uh, he does wind up. But he does wind up opening the door. But he does wind up opening the door, getting everybody in. But when he realizes that uh, to, that uh, Ark doesn't fit, he turns on the he turns on the burglar system that that his Nana had installed, which uh, essentially just turns on a bunch of floodlights that blind the goblins, and uh, they immediately and they immediately leave. But uh, they then declare that uh, they're that they're all that they then declare that they'll be that they'll be back. Or specifically Frogwa. We don't know. We don't specifically know what they say, but uh, Frogwa. The way Fro Frogwa say makes a makes a noise. Makes a series of noises that implies they'll be back later. But uh, but of course they and of course they immediately start. They immediately proceed to leave and go out. Go leave the leave the, leave the house and leave the backyard. But uh, and of course they immediately go upstairs and uh, and of course Nana and of course when when Toby's Nana Nancy asks asks Toby who it is. And he points out that they're going, that it's just that it's just him, and that they're going to go upstairs and go hang out and go hang out in his room for a bit and binge watch some of their shows. So they do immediately go up and go up into into the bedroom, where they then proceed to discuss a bit of a game plan. And uh, and of course Blinky and of course Blinky points out that uh, if this is problem that that's a problematic and that they're probably going to have to prepare for a, for a fight. I'm um, pointing out that uh, obviously that not only are the tro not only are the uh, tro not only are the goblins going to kind of maybe come most likely come back. 
Um, but uh, he does point out he does point out that uh, that now that they know where Toby's house lives, he's probably not gonna be safe at all. But uh, and of course, but, and of course, he points out that uh, that the most that the most obvious solution to all of this is to track down the to track down the goblins' nest and figure out where they're living. So uh, he point and he points out that that's uh, that that's obviously something they're going to deal they're going to have to deal with. Um, but uh. And of course, as they're, but of course, as he's discuss, as he's discussing all of this, and uh, as and as Jim is trying to figure out a way to actually do that, pointing out that uh, that is that obviously, with, 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 with pointing out that obviously, um, he he's he's got, like got, got glasses and other things. He can't just go off and go look for a for a goblin nest. But uh, um, he, it's a, it's, a, it's it's at this point where uh, where to, where where Blinky hears a noise coming from Toby's dollhouse, and uh, sure enough, he discovers that Noam Chomsky is just living in the dollhouse with a, with a, with the, with the doll in question. And uh, and he's visibly upset by that, pointing out that that that, that Jim was supposed to kill the goblin. Well, he was supposed to kill the gnome. Why is the gnome still here? And uh, of course, Jim points out that he's obviously that he's actually and he is in fact taking care of it, which, which uh, of course uh, uh, infuriates infuriates Blinky, pointing out that uh, he's pointing out that he, that uh, rule number two is to always finish the fight. But uh, of course, Jim points out the obvious conundrum as well, and that uh, the rules are sometimes contradictory. And that's uh, for the first rule is to be afraid, except when you're fighting a goblin who can smell fear. So you know he points out that the rules are country are more conv conv convoluted than algebra, which he does point out that he has in, the, in a couple of hours, and uh, and points out that obviously the issue with that is that uh, they need to actually figure out what that they need to actually figure out what uh, the, the that uh, he he can't really deal with the, with tracking down a goblin horde with a goblin horde and figuring out where they live and a whole bunch of other things. So he points out for that reason they need to kind of that he he does need to point out that he's under a lot that he is under a lot of stress. But uh, of course, but and of course, the Blinky does sympathize with that and uh, tells him that uh, of course he's only human. That uh, he's still learning all the rules of how to be a troll hunter and troll troll culture in general. Since you know he's not a troll, but. Uh, and of course he points out, and of course he points out that uh, if he, he feels like he, if if taking learning the rules in his own way is how he's able to cope with all of it, then uh, he's not going to really go into that. It, that is probably going to be fine. Going to be fine. Um, but uh, and of course he tells that he tells Blinky, he tells um Jim and Joby that they should just go about their business, and that uh, they, and that's how they should, and that they should just kind of deal with it, deal with it, and that uh, they'll find the they'll find the Goblin Horde no problem, and that and, and let them know where the Dan is, so that they can just focus on their, living their lives. Um, but uh, and, uh, but also, but then he proceeds to, to chew out Toby and Toby and and uh, and, uh, and Jim for keeping a to Goblin adult a a gnome in a dollhouse, which uh, they just they just kind of smile sheepishly about. And uh, also, I didn't really bring it up, but there is a really funny moment in here where uh, where, where Nancy uh, hears them all talking and uh, wonder and, and points out that he doesn't that she doesn't recognize the voice. So uh, Toby tells his Nana that uh, he had that he's that, he's, that it's just a friend and that he has more than one. And uh, Toby, Toby, Toby's Nana just responds, "No, you don't," <laughs> which is funny, but uh, because you know she does, she knows that Toby doesn't have many friends because he's not that popular. But uh, which is funny, but you know also mean. But uh, in any case, it's at this point where uh, the, where where it's the next day, and uh, what we find out is that Jim's training is actually pay, 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 paying off quite well because uh, the, it's gym class at the end of the day, and they currently have dodgeball. They, they, they and they're they're currently playing a game of dodgeball, and uh, Jim and Jim of course is on one one team, and and uh, Steve is on the other team. With and uh, and also Jim is on is on a team with 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 uh, with, with, with Toby and Eli. And uh, what we find out is that because Jim's training is in fact paying off because he has become an expert dodgeball player. He is not getting hit by any of the balls, like at all. He's just he's just leaping through the air, dodge. He's just leaping through the air, dodging, dodging everything, and just and also occasionally throwing a throwing a dodgeball back by catching it. And uh, you know that's pretty that's pretty cool. And uh, Steve is, Steve of course becomes increasingly infuriated about the fact that uh, just that Jim is that Jim is dodging all of his attacks, but. Uh, but during the um, but during the um, f f but during the whole thing, um, s s um, Toby is actually complaining about his fi about his, f his tubby tracker and about how he doesn't have any more, and that he has no longer has any incentive to exercise because obviously the, the, the because as he points out, the draw for the, the the it was mainly the merch that was getting him to exercise. He points that out, and uh, without them without him without his ability to earn cool swag. He points out that he's that he's basically lost all reason to exercise, and uh, and case in point, he's just getting hit by dodgeball after dodgeball, and Jim occasionally has to catch one to to bring him back in. But uh, 
And of course, but of course, Jim, but of course, Jim points out that's uh, that he that he has more things to be concerned about about how uh, they're currently being they're currently being targeted by Goblin Vendetta, and that they should probably be a little bit more worried about that. But uh, in case, but in case uh, Jim eventually, but in case, but in case eventually Toby does get winds up getting hit multiple times, and also as does Eli, and Jim does then proceeds to throw catch two dodgeballs and gets two more people out. And uh, but of, and of course, this is this point where Steve tells tells Jim that uh, that that he can kiss his that uh, that, he, that Romeo can kiss his Julia goodbye. Um, and uh, and if Jim then proceeds to tell Steve to leave Claire out of this, and uh, then proceeds to catch a, another ball and throw it. But uh, Steve then proceeds to dodge out of the way right as Claire walks into the gym, and Steve can, and Jim can only watch in horror as he accidentally pelts, pelts um, Claire in the face with a dodgeball. Which you know is very unfortunate, but uh, but of course, it, but, it, but of course, and of course, Jim, and of course, uh, Jim. They know that Jim that that Claire's face is a little bit messed up, but the, but uh, Coach Lawrence just tells her to walk it off. We don't actually see her face. I should mention that during any of this, she just gets hit with a dodgeball and falls over. But uh, all we're told is that she now has a fat lip because of it. So. Uh, you know, not not super great. And uh, Jim, and the one when they're changing out their lockers and getting ready to go, and getting ready to go home, he does point out the obvious fact that uh, that that now that he was just making ground back with her, and then he hits her in the face with a dodgeball. And uh, and of course, she'll forgive him because it was an accident. Of course, she'll she, she because obviously he didn't mean to hit her in the face with a dodgeball. He was trying to hit Steve. Steve dodged out of the way, and she just happened to walk in. So, you know, not, not, she's not gonna, she's gonna forgive him eventually for that. It's not a big deal, but, uh, you know, when you're in high school, it is a huge deal. You just hit, he just hit the girl he likes with a dodgeball. Not great. But, uh, but of course he, but of course he then proceeds to point out that, but of course Toby point, points out that, uh, it'll be fine and that she will forgive give him and points out that, uh, that she just has a fat lip and that some girls pay a lot of money for that. So she'll probably forgive him for that. But, uh, of course, as they're talk as they're talking about the, the ramifications that Steve, that, uh, that, that that Claire just got hit in the face with a dodgeball. Um, Toby then proceeds to get a notice on his on his Toby Tracker app, revealing that he has a windbreaker now. And, uh, and of course, well, and of course, it's at this point where Jim realizes that's what the actual ramifications for that, and uh, points out and asks T Toby if he knows what this means. And uh, Toby points out that yes, you know, if it's not too warm or not too cold, he has a perfect cover up. But uh, but uh, but Jim then proceeds to correct him and points out, uh, well, first and foremost, yeah, he has a windbreaker now. Well, that's just a thing. But uh, he does point out that that Toby that Toby doesn't fully understand the ramifications, and uh, then proceeds to reveal that uh, if the Toby if the Toby tracker is still working and still earning miles. That means that one of the goblins is currently wearing it, which means they have a, a, a way to track to track them through GPS and figure out where where they're going. And uh, reveals that this is that this is the perfect way to actually uncover their nest and figure out where they're where they're living and sleeping. And uh, and of course and of course and of course it's at this point where they immediately decide that after school they're just gonna hop on their bikes and figure out where the where the nest is. And uh, when Toby points out that they should probably get Blinky and Art for backup, um, Toby point or um, Jim points out that for the obvious reasons. That's uh, they can't really go and get and get Blinky and Art because by the time they get the troll market and come back to go to, to find it, the battery could be dead and they won't have an opportunity anymore. So you know, but you know, I fully under, I fully understand. I fully understand where Jim's coming from with that. He po does point that out. But uh, he of course them see they of course they eventually track down the track down the uh, goblins. Um, and, and while it's at night, and uh, they immediately, and they do eventually figure out where the nest is, and as it turns out, it's in the Arcadia Arcadia Bay Arcadia Oaks um, Muse Muse um, Museum of Natural History, and uh, of course, this winds up this winds up becoming a concern because they realize that the goblins have been living there right under their noses, and uh, and sure, and more to the point, Miss Nomura then proceeds to walk into the walks in into and proceeds to close the door behind her, and uh, and they quickly realize that that that, that presents a problem because. She could very well become Goblin Chow, and uh, and of course, and of course, Toby proceeds to panic because there's a very good chance that she'll either become Goblin Chow or they'll lay eggs in her ears. But uh, which uh, Toby, which uh, Jim points out, is just preposterous, pointing out that he doesn't think that goblins will do that. But uh, they do point out that they need to get into the museum and warn her. So they immediately run, run up to the front door, but quickly discover the door's locked. So they start looking for an open window to try and climb in, so they can figure out how to actually, you know, defend to actually fight back and uh, and and find a way to actually save to actually save Miss Minomora. And uh, they do eventually find an open window, but uh, but but Toby objects to climbing inside, pointing out that it's breaking and entering. But uh, but of course, Jim points out that it's more breaking and rescuing, pointing out that they're going to come in, warn her about the goblins, and then leave. Um, 
and hopefully and hopefully and hopefully save her in the process but uh but uh, but of course they and of course they do proceed to walk to break in and uh and of course, this winds up having ramifications later in the episode. I'll point that out right now. Obviously, breaking and entering. Not super great. So don't do that. But, uh... Of course, they had a noble reason for it, of course. They were trying to save somebody from gob from goblins. That, that's that's obviously their entire their, their entire thing. And while that's probably not going to help hold up in a police statement, of course, for obvious reasons, they're just going to look at them and think they're crazy, the old teenagers. Which, you know, makes perfect sense. But it makes perfect sense that that would be a thing. Um, you know, we know that they're justified. They're trying to save somebody from Goblin Vendetta. Even if the even the police are not going to to listen to that for a police statement for reasons. But uh, of course, they then proceed to break in. And uh, what we quickly discover is that uh, once they break in and are start looking for Miss Nomura, we discover that the goblins actually sleep in a pi in a pile of film. They sleep in a, in a large puddle on the ceiling and uh, use and cover themselves with goo to kind of you know keep themselves fresh and hydrated. Which, uh, you know, is, is gross, but cool. And, uh, but guys, they then proceed to walk in and, uh, they quickly discover that Miss Nomura is, uh, that Miss Nomura is, seems to be fine for right now. And that, and she's currently opening a package for, for, which seemingly with new artifacts. But, uh, they quickly, but, and of course they quickly, uh, realize that they need to actually get, they need to actually kind of duck, the, they need to kind of figure out a, a good excuse to actually, you know, save her from the goblins. And, uh. Claim and claim why they have a good reason for breaking and entering, but you know there don't aren't many of those. And Jim does start thinking through a couple of a couple of possible excuses they could have, while uh, Toby try, tries to figure out what to, tries to get to figure out what Miss Nomura is actually up to. And uh, what we find out is that she pulls this strange ring-shaped object out of the box. And uh, this is this does wind up becoming an important plot point later in the later in this first in the season. But uh, and for right now, it's just this mysterious object that she's unboxing. But. Uh, but she does discuss, but of course, Toby doesn't fully understand what's going on, but uh, then Miss Nomura leaves, and then he sees her shadow change, and when she comes back, she has a very troll-like form to her, which, uh, of course, Toby immediately panics about, and uh, tries to tell Jim what's going on, but uh, of course, he point, but, and of course, Jim, and of course, because Toby's panicking, um, Jim tells him to calm down, pointing out that he'll wake the goblins with his adrenaline rush, um, but, and of course, he does do that, and they start, and, uh, and Frogwa specifically starts looking around trying to find them. But, uh, and, and, and of course they just start looking, and of course they then proceed to, it's at this point where they see the goblin and immediately do a dodge roll to actually get out of, the, get out of its line of sight. And, uh, and of course, Jim, but of course, and of course, Toby then proceeds to continue to, to try and explain what he saw to Jim about how, uh, the, about how, about how, uh, she, about how her face changed. And, uh, and, uh, they don't fully understand what exactly, well, Jim doesn't fully understand, pointing out that, pointing out that it might be a trick of the light, but, uh, of course he gets, of course Toby gets very defensive when Jim doesn't listen to him, but, uh, eventually, Nomura does in fact show up, and, uh, it's revealed that Nomura is in fact a, tr is in fact a, uh, a monster, is in fact a, a, a troll wearing a human face, which, uh, of course, is very, is very, is very, inter is very interesting, and, uh, she does wind up finding Jim in, inside the, uh, inside the, inside the, um, in, behind the trash can that he's hiding behind, and, uh, they, and she immediately, put, and she immediately chases them into an, into an oxygening room, which, uh, as we find out, is the room where Killahead Bridge is being rebuilt, and, uh, and, uh, and this all does explain some story-related things that were brought up previously, but, uh, of course, what we find, and of course, Jim, and it's at this point where, uh, where, where, where Nomura does proceed to corner them and proceeds to get ready to fight against Jim, and, uh, and, and, uh, th but, uh, Jim then proceeds to, then proceeds to wonder how she, how she, then proceeds to, uh, well, she, she, she points, makes a joke about how, uh, she hasn't had a human troll hunter before and wonders how he'll taste, but, uh, he, wa he wonders how she'll, ha if she'll like the taste of daylight, at which point he summons his armor, which, and, uh, Toby points out as a cool one-liner, at which point the two of them proceed to fight, but, uh, Jim quickly realizes that she kind of has him outmatched out a little bit, and, uh, wonders what she is, and, uh, she'll, she remarks that she's the thing that'll kill him, and, uh, and then proceeds to, and then, and they then proceed to get into a fight. And, uh, it's also at this point where Frogwar proceeds to walk into that, walk into the, uh, into the room. And, uh, Toby quickly realizes that Frogwar is the one that has his, has his tubby tracker. And, uh, immediately gets into a wrestling match with him to try and get his tubby tracker back. So, you know, while Jim is currently fighting for, fighting to, to defeat Nomura, um, z z z uh, Toby is currently fighting, z fighting Frogwar to get his tubby tracker back. Which, you know, is funny. But, uh... But of course, Jim. But of course, eventually, no more. But of course, Jim, Toby, Toby does eventually get his Toby his Toby tracker back. 
while uh, Nomura, while Nomura is eventually overpowers Jim and takes it and knocks his sword away, and uh, and of course then proceeds to then proceeds to uh, point out that it'll that it'll be fun killing him, but uh, and of course but of course in the process she winds up knocking down a banner and winds up standing on it as does Fragwa, and uh, Jim eventually gets a brilliant idea, and remember what what uh, so what. Uh, what is it? What what's Blinky said to him about about the first rule of troll hunting? He merely responds that arrogance will get you killed, and proceeds to grab the banner with Nomura on it. At which point she lands on top of Fragua, much to her fear, and winds up and winds up squishing him. And uh, this winds up winds up gaining the ire of the other goblins, who uh, again don't have any sort of any sort of graphic cause and effect. And rather than going after Jim for you know squishing for actually being the one to squish her, their brethren. Their, their leader on um, the new frog well, then proceeds to lead his goblin horde on the, on nomura for being the one to actually do the squishing and uh and she and she in protest pointing out that it's not actually her wasn't actually her to do it but uh she then proceeds to get attacked and, and is and is viciously attacked and, and attempts to be ripped apart by goblins and uh toby and toby and jim then take this opportunity to 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 leave and uh but uh they, and at which point they then proceed to scoop up their bikes and, cr and climb out of the museum and leave um, but uh, it's a, and it's at this point where they actually start discussing a couple of the things they saw. Um, specifically, Jim saw that the Sims. Jim noticed that while they were fighting, that uh, the kilt, that the bridge that was in there had troll markings on it, which uh, he does point out is obvious is obviously suspicious. But uh, also, they point out the much more obvious revelation that uh, Nomura is a changeling. And that's the and that's and the, which also means that now they know they realize that troll that some of their enemies could be walking very well be walking amongst them and they have no idea. So for that reason, and they quickly realize that that's a that that's very much a problem, and they need to figure out a way to deal with that. Um, but uh, and, but of course, but of course, before they can actually go back to Blinky and Arg and, and give the revel and give the reveal that uh, that there's changelings and, and where Killer Head Bridge is being put together, um, the, the police then proceed to show up. And, Jim, and and then proceed to positively identify Jim and Toby as the ones that broke into the museum, and then proceed to arrest them. So, uh, so yeah, these episodes, that's how the episode ends. But I should mention the episode is this episode is interesting for a couple of reasons. Because first and foremost, this this episode reveals a bunch of things that we knew as an audience, but Jim and Toby haven't really figured out yet. But first and foremost, they now know that changelings are a thing, and that. Uh, and specifically that and specifically that they're a threat to our to the people of Arcadia and uh, that they're going to need to figure out a way to actually deal with it to actually deal with the to deal with them as they go for, go forward and uh, also more specifically it also introduces that the goblins are working for Nomura and ever and whoever else is currently is currently in charge of trying to bring Gunmar out of out of Killahead Bridge uh, because that's what they're it's implied they're doing um but uh also, more specific, and but also, this also a real, there's also that thing, that ob, that that strange circular object that Nomura pulled out of a box. Uh, that'll be a reveal later what that does. But uh, and then also more specifically, and then also obviously, this also explains how how um, Strickler and Bular were able to build to actually build Killahell Bridge inside the museum without anybody knowing. The curator is a changeling. Which means they, which means she doesn't really give a shit. She's, in fact, she's probably help. She's actually helping them build the bridge as well. So, uh, you know, probably not going to. So, yeah, they're probably not going to figure out how to. Uh, they're probably not going to be very worried. The only person who seems to know otherwise is the is the security guard, and uh, it's implied he got eaten by Bilar. So, you know, he's very dead. But, uh, but uh, yeah, this uh, but yeah, this episode establishes a lot of plot points and other things that the episode was going into. And uh, you know, I'm looking forward to discussing some of those with those, with with you going next time. Although next time we're going to actually get to the fight withdrawal because that was a thing they were they were supposed to do two episodes ago and they didn't do it yet because Jim was obviously training to get for his fight withdrawal. So uh, you know, eventually it's got it is happening next episode, but uh, it's gonna it it does, it does take a while. I will openly admit that, but. Uh, in any case, that's going. But in any case, that is in fact going to do it for today's review of Troll Hunters. What do you guys think? Let's get a discussion in the comment section down below, or over on my Discord server. Link in the description. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter in the description below. Um, be sure to check out my Patreon in the description below as well. It's only a couple bucks a month. It does really help me out. And you guys get access to a bunch of cool perks that are my way saying thanks. So please go check those out. Link is down in the description. Um, and also, be sure and go and check out my Twitch. I stream Saturdays and Sundays. Please go check those out. I would very much appreciate it if you did that and helped me push for affiliate on there. I would appreciate that. Please go check those out. Um, and also, be sure and go and check out my... Uh, what is it? Go check out the videos linked in the engine as well, since you're already here and you probably want to see more content from me. 
the top video is the most recent video, it may or may not be this video. But the bottom video is the video I recommend to you based on what you've already seen from me. So if you want to try something new or see more of what you like, then be sure to check both those videos out. I don't even know where the bladder one's going to send you, actually, because this is a new series for me. But, uh, you know, I'm curious. So let me know where it sends you. But uh, in any case, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!